Welcome everyone to the video and as it says in the title, I'll be breaking down the man himself, Keisuke Masanaga. Now this won't be about his animation, but rather individual frames and just discussing all the small details and stylistic notes that brought everything together in giving such a rough and fearsome look to his characters. And before we get started, the featured artist today is Tin underscore XD. He does some outstanding work and I'm sure he would appreciate your support. Link to his account will be in the description. And if you want a chance to feature in a video, tag me on either Instagram or Twitter and use this hashtag. So I got this idea by doing these Masanaga inspired redraws lately, kind of imagining like a what if a particular scene appeared in the boo arc or whatever. And so I was constantly breaking down his work and what made it stand out. So I thought it'd be interesting to share and discuss my observations I've made, etc. So firstly, we have this shot here by Isao Sugimoto and is corrected by Keisuke Masanaga, of course. This, I believe, is his second debut as animation supervisor and he gives Goku a really intense expression. So now let's take a closer look. Now, generally, it wouldn't be uncommon for his facial muscle here to be drawn with a single line and straight down with another line underneath, pretty much like in the original image above. However, with Masanagra, especially compared to the other animator, he draws these two lines much more on an angle, very pointy looking, making it appear that the muscle is pushing more outwards. Furthermore, he kind of sections off each little muscle group underneath. And lastly, he draws this line here much shorter, which kind of gives this sort of twisting motion. Now, although small, this compared to the original, helps in pushing the expression and intensity, and pushing this group outwards is one element that makes the eye feel a lot more like it is sitting in a socket, thus helping in the face feeling more three-dimensional. That's why we have to be intentional with every line and pay attention to even the smallest details. And the next point I would like to make is the eyes and eyebrows. Although quite off model, they are very interesting and fearsome, and the shape itself is quite different, but usually it's just one pen stroke on the top, perhaps a second one a little lower, one here underneath, one line here near the end, curves inwards with another line, one here and one here. With Masanaga though, he really arches the eyebrow upwards and has the top end of the eyebrow more on a slant than another curved line on top with the third line being very angled and pointy. Then it just sort of curves in this wavy motion underneath. And so the way he is drawn the eyebrow makes it feel like it is actually wrapping around the muscle here. The shape itself is also quite angular and pointy and I've briefly talked about good shape language in relation to shading in the past, but it absolutely applies to pretty much every aspect of a design. And in this case, the shape of the eyebrow is sharp, which again might seem like a really minor thing, but as I said, the term before shape language, it's just that. It's a language that works in unison with other elements that are drawn in a similar way. For example, if the ear was drawn very rounded, it'd feel quite out of place because it is a completely different shape that conveys a different message. Whereas Masanaga stylizes this feature once again in a very angular way, having the bottom part kind of curve inwards rather than out, adding to the overall rough aesthetic to his work. Oh, and the eyes themselves are a bit more rounded off surprisingly, and he doesn't have them on the same angle as the original and brings them lower down on the face. Now to the jawline, once again, the way he stylizes it is much different than other animators. Usually it wouldn't be uncommon even in Toriyama's work for it to be quite simplified. So you would like have one line on the side of the head, another for the jawline, one for the chin, another one here and one here. Whereas Masanaga seems to have about seven separate lines with quite a more detailed chin. However, what really gives that intense feel to this piece is how curved inwards the jawline is and the chin, as I said, being more detailed and defined, really packing that fearsome look to Goku, especially in contrast to the original. And finally, what brings this piece together is the mouth. For one, it feels much more three-dimensional by drawing the teeth in more of a curved direction. He also makes a choice to show the inside of the mouth and even draw the teeth quite angular, and it feels phenomenally more expressive. The mouth overall is also pushed more sideways and places a extra line above. He draws the lips somewhat, and unlike the original, which draws the creases under Goku's eyes pretty much in a straight line, he draws the creases with more of a curve. However, not completely like you would usually see. Instead, this line here kind of comes down more in a sharp way. And lastly, he adds a bit more flow to Goku's hair. Next up is Kid Buu from episode 279. The original layout was done by Takayuki Manaka and the corrected layout by Masanaga. So once again, we get a great example of exaggerated expressions. And the first point of interest is how the character's face doesn't feel flat. And this is in part done by making certain features of the head curve around. For example, the eyes are drawn in a curved motion. The top of the mouth, again, is a curved line. 
The ears are drawn facing downwards instead of just straight out and, and placed more to the side of the head, which overall really makes it feel like Boo's face is being stretched and pushed outwards, adding to the overall exaggeration and thus intensity. And once again, the mouth like last time is really great. He seems to push the upper lip even higher than in the original and the mouth feels like it has been stretched by drawing the edges of the mouth downwards instead of just straight to the side. There are some additional lines added around the mouth indicating the folds of the skin and with his great placement of shading, it really gives a strong sense of form. And some extra little details like the teeth are added as well as giving Boo these pointy little nostrils. He also is partially squinting one eye. So overall, when you combine all these various elements together, you get a powerful expression that much better illustrates to the viewer the stress the character is going through and is also great character acting, making him feel alive. But with that final note, I'll end the video there. There were definitely other little stylistic notes I definitely could have pointed out. I felt like those were the major ones that really make his work stand out. And most important, the ones that were worth mentioning. And overall, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new, whether you were an artist or not. And with that, I'll see you later.